So today's design came from wanting to try a new technique. About a decade ago, I was watching a TV show called Redwood Kings. They made these crazy tree houses from redwood stumps and other salvaged materials. So while watching that TV show, one guy demonstrated how to make these crazy crooked posts from a straight 4x4 on the bandsaw, basically turning the 4x4 inside out. I immediately knew I wanted to try this on some kind of project. Now I've seen other people demonstrate this on YouTube, but never really incorporate it into a project. The technique itself is fairly simple, but coming up with a use case on how to use it in a piece of furniture was a bit of a challenge. So for this project, I decided to incorporate that technique into creating a coat rack that looks like it belongs in Whoville. So even though this 4x4 is going to get turned inside out, I'm still going to take some time to lay out my joinery area, even though those lines will end up on the inside, because I need it to start straight so that way the coat rack will stand up straight. All right, and I want my curves to be somewhat consistent as it goes up the uh, coat rack. So I'm just using a bucket because it has a consistent radius and it was handy to, uh, to create those curves. I'm just trying to eyeball uh, the start and stop points and uh, just kind of a, a visually a pleasing manner as it goes up the thing. And no, Home Depot is not a sponsor. They're just narcissists that have to put their name on everything. So that's the shape I came up with. All right, so before I cut the curves, I just used the fence on my bandsaw to uh, cut some straight areas for the joinery to go. All right, so we're gonna tape these two pieces back together and then cut it down the other side so I will have four pieces in the end. So here's how we're going to turn this thing inside out. We're going to take the right side and put it on the left and we're going to take the top and put it down around on the bottom. Boom. Now we have our uh, nice little curvy curve uh, post. All right, so I'm going to glue this thing up in one shot because I want to make sure that everything lines up really well and then I'm gonna clamp the bejesus out of it. Now, I uh, have a ton of clamps, but for this project you need two tons of clamps and some of the clamps that I have aren't the right size or shape to work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some rope here to twist tight around it. And as we uh, tighten this rope up, it is going to add a lot of clamping pressure. And I'm gonna be able to uh, put a rope clamp pretty much everywhere. So this will save me from having to buy a ton more clamps and rope was like 15 bucks at the uh, big box store. All right, so it's the next day. So we're just gonna unfurl these guys and get this uh, ready for the next step. All right, so this is the top, and I envision having eight arms coming off to hang eight different coats. So one arm will come off each of these square flat spots, and then I'm gonna cut this guy down as a flat spot right here, so this will end up being an octagon. Now I'm not really sure how I want to handle this transition, so I'm gonna leave it 
uh, hole as it is now, because I can always remove more material later. Uh, but uh, our next step here is just to make these guys into octagons. So there's our octagon shape. So in these facets right here, we'll just figure out how to ease those away as the project progresses. All right, I'm gonna switch out the router bits and use this same jig to cut mortises for the, uh, the coat rack arms. To keep everything going straight, I just clamped on a couple of runners on either side of the jig so that way it can slide along the box there. All right, so the base is going to be assembled with a joint called a castle joint. It's kind of like a, a half lap uh, bridle joint combination thing. And um, this joint is a little bit too tall to go through my table saw. And also this piece is a little bit too tall and wheelie to go through my table saw. So I'm just going to cut it by hand with the Japanese pole saw. Now, the best advice I can give with a Japanese pole saw is to just take your time. If your arm is getting tired, resist the uh, urge to grab it with two hands and use two hands. Uh, two hands is kind of the, uh, the beginner method and you will very quickly go off your line because you're getting your body mechanics out of line with your line of cut. So one hand, if your arm gets tired, take a little break and then uh, come back to it. Uh, but resist uh, using two hands. One hand, you'll hit your line every time. All right, so to relieve the material in the middle is just some chisel work. All right, so to cut the other half of the castle joint, I just used the dado stack at the table saw, uh, set to the right depth, and just cut to a knife line. And a little test fit just to make sure it fits before cutting the half lap, and I'll just mark my half lap joint with a knife. All right, I think that's going to go. Might just need a little bit more touch up in there. But uh, before I drive it home and do all that, I want to cut some kind of shape on here uh, to make it a little more decorative. All right, so I've spent some time cutting up some different sizes and lengths of plywood here just to uh, uh, kind of get a visual on how big I want the arms to be. So just what is going to look good visually with my design. So I'm thinking I kind of like this size right here. So this is probably the size I'm going to go with. This one feels just a little bit too long. Especially once uh, once you get a coat hanging on there. I think this one was going to be the winner. And so for my design, I think I kind of want it to have like a rounded front here. And then when it comes to the top, so the coat doesn't slide off, when you put it on there, I think it needs to kind of have a little swoop or a little indentation. Something like this. Kind of what I'm envisioning. And then for the bottom, just to kind of, so it's not a straight boring piece, something along those lines.
All right, so I'm just going to use a dado stack in the table saw here to cut the tenons on the coat hooks before I cut the curved shape in them. All right, I'm going to use my Andy Klein twin turbo vise to cut these guys to width. So to reduce the amount of tear out and so the router doesn't have to work so hard, I'm just going to cut the bulk of the excess material off here at the bandsaw. All right, so I got the shape for the arms dialed in for your coat to hang on, and I'm really digging that, I like it. Uh, so now I need to decide what shape I wanna do on the feet to hold up the coat rack. So instead of reinventing the wheel, here's my thought after playing with this a little bit. So we got the shape looking like that. So if we turn it upside down and then put a little spacer in here to hold it up off the ground, because you don't want the middle to touch or the coat rack could rock. But now I have this cool little foot shape. I think I'm going to go with that. What do you think? I'm liking it. All right, got all that glue cleanup to do and all the bandsaw marks to get off of there. So I'm going to use a little power carving to do that and uh, see what I can do and hope it doesn't uh, become ugly.
All right, the coat rack is done. I think it turned out pretty great. Uh, my wife has informed me she's not a big fan of the coat rack design, so uh, stay tuned for a new coat rack build, or uh, maybe I'll, uh, I'll introduce you to a new wife. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, turned out pretty well. Thanks for watching.